We're going to start by focusing on Oregon Measure 102, and League of Women Voter Speakers Bureau member Carol Cushman is going to start the discussion. Carol? Thank you. Uh, measure 102 amends the Constitution, allows local bonds for financing affordable housing with non-governmental agencies, requires voter approval, annual audits. This was referred by the 2018 legislature. It is required that it be re referred for a vote of the people because it is a constitutional amendment. Financial impacts are that there will be no state revenues or expenditures created because of this measure and no required revenues or expenditures for local governments because of this measure. This is enabling legislation only. The pro there can be proposed bonds for affordable housing brought forward by a local government and it will then require voter approval. But that is a separate vote at the local level at that time. Measure 102 does not raise any funds. Uh, yes vote on this measure removes the restriction that affordable housing projects funded by municipal bonds must be government owned. It is an amendment to the Constitution, so it will allow bond revenue to be used to fund construction with NGOs without retaining complete ownership. A no vote retains the prohibition on local government to raise money to loan credit to NGOs for any purpose. In the 1800s, we amended the Oregon Constitution to prohibit the use of local funds with to be used with private enterprise. Later, the Oregon Supreme Court had a case where the city was not allowed to use general obligation bonds for railroad improvements. The Constitution allows that local government can build affordable housing, but only if it retains ownership. This action was sought by the city of Portland and by other local governments in the metropolitan area. Testimony at the hearing in favor came from the Oregon Housing Alliance, which is a coalition of more than 80 organizations from throughout the state. The current city bond that we have for housing would, cannot do any building with partnerships at this time. Similarly, the proposed Metro bond without this measure cannot go into partnership with other groups. The difference with measure 101 is from units that would house 7,500 people to units that will house 12,000 people. The funds will go further in combination with other organizations. Many areas throughout the state lack affordable housing and could make use of this option. It is something that is used in some manner right now with urban renewal areas, but it is not always possible to put every place you want to put affordable housing into an urban renewal, but renewal area. The proposal will allow local governments to issue bonds to be used in partnership as one part of financing developments. They can include federal low-income tax credits, private capital, and other funds. The expertise or author of authorities and NGOs to manage ongoing operations of affordable housing is good rather than governments needing to manage the housing once it is built. Supporters of this measure say that it will allow for more affordable housing to be built. It will allow the use of bond dollars in partnership with nonprofit and private housing providers. There is no organized opposition, but opponents have mentioned that we do not 
amend the Constitution lightly, and the state could use bond money for projects of more widespread benefit, such as roads or parks. Thank you.